here the input and the output uh, for the simulation are uh, stored in an LCD and in Python we have to run this uh, command conda install Yes. So you have to open the Anaconda prompt. And then um, run the command conda space install. NetCDF is a, a auto-explicative format of data. They, they are also compressed and the data can be having any dimension, so they can have x, y, and uh, because uh, at this point you cannot go any, anymore with CSV files. At the beginning, actually, I think that Nicolò implemented with the CSV file, but you have thousands of files. As you see. Because you also have. Yes. So you have to adopt a, a way to store data. And that's in the app, a pretty, a pretty standard one. And also, the NetCDF are very useful, maybe when you move to the Bidimensional or two dimensional case, otherwise it's quite complex. But they are for the, global the data. Yeah, so. For the data of Copernicus for climate sentences yes. are stored in its. Yes. cell of the domain and we start from a simple CSV file. Then uh, when uh, we have prepared this one and the time series for the boundary condition, we can uh, run uh, the simulation in the OMS console. The output of this simulation is uh, a net CDF file that we can uh, open with uh, a Python computer. So the discretization of the domain consists in uh, we assume uh, define a, a soil column that has different uh, layers of soil, and the, the, uh, what we want is a uh, discretization. So we have deep, uh, we define some centroids, and on which we can uh, compute the, the solution. Of course, we can have different uh, parameters uh, in the soil. So for in this case, we have a, a plot of the water content. Uh, so we see that uh, we have a first layer, and then a second one, which uh, the water content is uh, higher, and a third one with a smaller water content. And important uh, is uh, to assign an initial condition for the water content, uh, for the water suction, that is uh, the point from which we start to run our simulation. Uh, so, in the, if you open uh, the project folder, there is a folder <coughs> in the Jupyter Notebook. One uh, is just a, a notebook with some information uh, to run uh, to use this uh, this component. 
then you can find an outlook in which uh, uh, you can learn how to read a NetCDF file. And now we open uh, the notebook uh, <coughs> one richard smash gen underscore van de Newton. So here I prepare a different notebook with the number one because you can have uh, different uh, uh, models to describe the water content and the hydraulic conductivity. And so for each of these uh, type of uh, models, uh, we have different uh, CSV files. Uh, the difference between this uh, CSV file is just in the header of the columns, uh, because change, uh, uh, what changes just the name of the sum parameters. So, for example, we now we use a Van der Newton model, the Van der Newton model. So we can use this uh, notebook to create our our kit. So if we go in the data folder of the project. Uh, we can find uh, three different folders. The first one uh, is uh, grid underscore net CDF. This is uh, the grid uh, net CDF file that is used to run uh, the simulation. Uh, the second one contains some uh, CSV files. For example, I can show you the first one. So this uh, CSV file contains some information from which we can uh, build uh, our grid. And then uh, there is another folder that is a uh, time series which uh, you uh, can uh, save your time series that are very similar to those you used during the, in the past days. The only difference is that here we have just one column because we need just one uh, one time user to define the boundary condition at the top and then with uh, another CSV file we can define the boundary condition at the top of the domain at the bottom of the domain Did you find the so in the notebook if we start uh, to run the first cell we can uh, import uh, the, uh, some the, the libraries and here we can define some variables uh, the first one uh, we have to define the folder containing the input file so it is uh, uh, your part of the OMS project data Richard's messages underscore input so what we have to enter here is just the the first part of the part uh, that is the part uh, to your OMS project. Then you can enter the input file name, that is the CSV file you want to read. The output file name, which is the net CDF of the grid. And here you can enter a, a, a string that if, uh, can uh, is stored in the net CDF. So when you open the net CDF, you can uh, remember what uh, you how you created uh, your uh, this file because one of the advantages of the NetCDF is that you can enter also not only the values but also some uh, metadata. And then uh, uh, here there is another variable, each type, in which you can define uh, which type of uh, initial condition you want. You can choose between uh, hydrostatic, constant, uh, linear interpolation, uh, or piecewise hydrostatic. Uh, spider, when I'm uh, opening the Python here, <coughs> spider couldn't uh, find, I mean, Python couldn't find the CDF. Uh, because maybe you didn't install uh, the library. Okay. Yeah, that's what's in the 
So once you have uh, defined these uh, variables here, you just run all the notebook. The notebook uh, calls some uh, function and uh, it writes for you the, the NetCDF file with the, the, grid inform the information of the grid. So now the problem is to understand how to create uh, the input file, the CSV file. So the CSV file is a, a file that has uh, these uh, columns. So the first column is a type, eta, then we have the other one. So every time you just copy the file you can have, uh, you have in your folder and just modify the values uh, that are inside. So the first column type can be is a can be L or M. L identifies a layer, so you can define the stratigraphy of your soil. M is uh, used to if you have uh, some measuring point, uh, so you want that uh, that point becomes a point in which you compute the the solution. Eta is the vertical coordinate that is the, the positive upward and it defines the depth of uh, your layer or measure, measurement point. N is the number of the control walk volumes that, uh, in which you want to divide your, each layer of your domain. Here, for example, the first layer has uh, 320 control volumes. But this, this, is, can, this uh, value can be changed as you like. The C column is uh, used to contains the initial condition for the water suction. So the important thing is that we have to prescribe the water suction in the last line that is uh, defined at the bottom of your column. In this case, uh, I set uh, zero, so means that at the bottom of my, of my soil column, I have the water table. If I have some measurement point, I have to prescribe a value. Uh, otherwise, I just set uh, minus 90, uh, like uh, not a number value, because it's not used. And the first line refers to the soil surface. So if I have a positive value, means that I have a water pond in that soil surface. Otherwise, I have, can set also a negative value. So I just say, that the soil surface is dry. And then uh, uh, this column uh, defines the parameter, for example, for the Van der Lufthen model. And uh, the name of this column can change according to the type of the model we want to use. For example, for the Brooks Cori, you can see that uh, the name is always the same. Sorry, the name uh, is N and C D. This is an error in this uh, image. For example, we can have uh, the Kosuji model. So in this case, we have uh, as a header R, that is the median of the torque size distribution, and sigma, that is the standard deviation. Or we can have also uh, the model by uh, Nuncio Romano, in which there are uh, five parameters. W is a weighting factor because this is a B model for size distribution. So we have a weighting factor. Sigma one is a standard deviation of the poor size dis distribution that is uh, relative to the soil uh, texture. Sigma two refers to the standard deviation of the soil structure. H two, H one and H two are the median of the poor size distribution. Then we have uh, a column that defines uh, the water content at saturation, the water content, uh, the residual water content, uh, and the hydraulic conductivity. And there are two other columns, uh, alpha specific storage and beta specific storage, uh, that are two parameters that are used to extend the soil water retention curve uh, also in the saturated zone. So when uh, C is uh, larger than zero, the water content is not uh, 
constant, uh, but varies according with the, these two parameters. And now, um, so the only thing is that uh, you start with a, um, a CSV file, and then you enter all the values you want to, to run the simulation. In this CSV file, you define the geometry, the number of discrete the, the, the points on which you compute the solution, and the parameters of the simulation. So now we can have a look also to the um, the same file. So you can open your project in uh, OMS. Yeah, you have probably to increase the size of the fonts. Okay. So uh, at the beginning we define the start date and end date of our simulation and the time step of our time series. And then uh, here we have the component section. So we have a reader for the net CDF of the grid. Then we call the solver. Uh, we have two reader for the boundary condition. So that uh, so reader data top VC is a reader for the top boundary condition and the other one for the bottom. There is a component that is called buffer that stores uh, all the results of the simulation. And uh, at the end of the simulation, we write all the, the output to a NetCDF file. This uh, NetCDF file is uh, um, written by the, the writer. And here in the parameter section, we define uh, all the inputs for the, for the components. So the read NetCDF component uh, needs uh, the part of the and that's the CDF file containing the, the grid. Then uh, here we, you can choose uh, between uh, different uh, soil water retention model. You have uh, just copy this uh, string uh, here and you can change uh, the water retention model. And the same is uh, for the unsaturated hydraulic conductivity. This is the, these are the available models. And uh, this one, this line solver type uh, unsaturated hydraulic conductivity temperature model. Uh, here you can, uh, if, if you set the not, uh, not temperature, means that the hydraulic conductivity does not depend on temperature. Otherwise, you can <coughs> use uh, um, Ronan, uh, Ronan uh, 1998 uh, to define the dependence of the hydraulic conductivity on temperature. But here we have just to change the, the string. Copy to change the the second part no. of you, yeah. the okay. big uh, line. Yeah. Okay. So you just copy this string uh, yeah. here and you can comment the other one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, here you can define also the soil temperature that is a constant uh, over time and also in space. And uh, this temperature is uh, defined in Kelvin. Uh, beta zero is a parameter to describe the dependence of the water content uh, on uh, temperature. You can leave uh, this, uh, this value that is, comes from the literature. And here there is the reference temperature uh, of the water suction on temperature, so this is uh, the reference value. So at uh, this value, uh, water content does not. Uh, I mean, this is the reference in this formula. Uh, 
to update the what to if the water con depends on temperature we have also defined a reference temperature and this is not I mean in literature there is some va it, uh, values are suggested but it, I'm not sure this is uh, constant because there is some uncertainty on this value. If but we activate the bottle velocity dependency to temperature which run on 1998, then in the second row, we need to add, uh, we need to delete the assuming homogeneous and constant temperature and, and give for every depth or every cell the no, no. amount of temperature. No, the temperature no. is assumed to be constant uh, in depth. But when, before, if we say it's dependent, water velocity is dependent on temperature, how I can assume it's constant? No, the temperature constant. is constant. You define a uh, constant temperature for your soil, mm -hmm. but this uh, uh, temperature uh, modify the hydraulic conductivity. But this, but this temperature is for soil, right? Yeah. So then it is ch it it's changes the No, it's, the temperature is constant, but what changes the hydraulic conductivity of your soil? Because you define a, a reference value, and then you modify this one according to the soil temperature. So in this formula, So in this formula, you prescribe uh, uh, Ks at uh, reference temperature. And if you change the temperature of your soil, you can modify the hydraulic conductivity. Because now you have uh, just the mass equation, so you cannot change the temperature of the soil. Because you cannot uh, update the temperature in, uh, over time. You should uh, because, also uh, I have kind of sensor uh, uh, that I add in soil that every hour I have soil temperature and soil water content with that okay. sensor. So I know it's, it's not constant soil, soil temperature yeah, as I well know. as moisture. Yeah. But you have to couple the mass equation to the energy equation. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to present this here now. But we have it. Okay. So this is just uh, to see which is the effect uh, of the temperature on the hydraulic conductivity. I can perform different, the same uh, uh, simulation changing the temperature and see what happens to the hydraulic conductivity and at the end of what happens to the soil moisture content. So for example in this case uh, I run uh, the same simulation and just change the temperature of the soil and what I uh, the result is that the water bonding is different just because I change the temperature. The temperature uh, changes modify the hydraulic conductivity and this is the, at the end, uh, there is a variation in the water volume. Can I have also that simulation to see the data, how or not? Uh, not yes, it's not in this project, but I can send you. But I mean, on this project, you just change it. You keep everything constant, you just change the temperature mm -hmm. of the soil, and you should uh, get this result. And then uh, here we have uh, the top boundary condition is defined uh, a Neumann boundary condition since we have the coupled problem, the coupled model that uh, solve uh, the Richards equation and the shallow water equation. For the bottom boundary condition, we have different types. Uh, and also here, I just copy this string uh, here and we are done. And then there are some other parameters, for example, how to compute the hydraulic uh, conductivity at the interface of two cells. Uh, the best option is to use uh, the max, so you take the maximum value of the hydraulic conductivity. And uh, I think that the, here uh, you can uh, define uh, the time delta is uh, the time step uh, of integration. So as soon as this is uh, smaller, the computation is uh, slower, but the accuracy is, uh, is better. Then you can uh, define uh, the path for the reader. And here you define uh, the path for the, uh, the output file that goes in the output folder. And the extension of the file is .nc that is in that CDF. And at the end, you can find the connection section. 
So you can, uh, uh, for example, I change the name here. You can try to run the simulation. Should I change the name? Yeah. I just changed the name because I don't overwrite over the, the output file. Once uh, the simulation uh, is finished, okay. you can open the notebook uh, number three. So cell you have to define the path to the folder data which has gen underscore input. Then, for example, we can open also the input file for the top boundary condition. So here in the sim file, uh, I use uh, uh, tr sen 10 hours. Constant intensity of rainfall? Yes, in this case, yes. But I you can have variable. Yeah, this file was created. Uh, I computed, for example, I think uh, the uh, rainfall with a um, input return. Yeah, with a return period? Return period of 10, ten years uh, and a duration of 10 hours. In that place that it was simulated. Then uh, you can open your uh, output folder. And uh, change the file name with the, your, the output of your simulation. And in this cell I call a function that is written in a Python script that reads the, the NetCDR file. So now I would like to plot uh, the solution uh, for all the domain in different, uh, at different times. So here in my data, I can define the, the data that I want to plot. The notebook is speaking in Italian. Consider the solution. Say, I consider the solution for for the date, uh, and this is the list of uh, of the dates. So for ten years, starting those dates, 
here in the variable dates, you can define all the dates you want to plot. Obviously, they they need to be inside the date where you simulate. Yeah, of course. Before to plot the, the solution, we can plot the initial condition. <coughs> so here we have uh, two, plot, two plots. The blue line is the water suction, and the red one is the hydraulic head. That's fine, maybe, for outputs. Uh, you have to check. I changed it uh, in my simulation, but you can check in your uh, simulation file here when uh, there is the writer. You can check which is the name of the output file. For example, here I plot the water suction. Yeah, what you see is the difference uh, also in the layers. And you see also the discontinuity here between the layers. Yeah, there is uh, oh, okay. the layer, the interface between two different types of soil. So the water infiltrates here, but then uh, the infiltration is lower. And then you can plot, for example, uh, the hydraulic head. Then uh, there is a plot for the water content. Yeah, the water content obviously is discontinuous because you have three. If you see the red line, which is the last one, or the, you see that uh, uh, in, in each, uh, what is continuous? Oh, okay, it looks discontinuous also the. Uh, the, the suction, but actually is a, you have a, a, a continuous but sharp variation in the suction, the, which is the which is the uh, the figure before. This one. Yeah, this one. You see, it looks discontinuous, but it is continuous in reality. What is really discontinuous here is the water, the water content, because it, the water content depends on the type of soil you have. So, for example, if you, you plot the water content at the, in the, the initial condition, you see that even if the water suction is a, a, a straight line, the water content can be different. You can have, a, you probably, if you have different types of soil, you have a discontinuous profile of the water content. Because you are just in change the soil water retention, the parameters of the soil water retention. Yeah, this is quite obvious from the point of view of the Richards equation, but this is an obvious for in other treatment because, you know, if you have reservoirs, uh, water there is uh, is mixed, you don't have any differentiation due to horizons, uh, which can be pretty unphysical and in some problems can be pretty important instead. And this, uh, so here you can see a lot of things. And as you see here, you, I don't know how many points he put. How many points he put? I don't remember. That is quite. Because uh, this is an input file that was already present in yeah, the folder. But you have at least 100 points there. Yeah. And, uh, so you have a lot of points, and the simulation was pretty fast. So. Yeah. So then uh, here there are other functions that uh, can, with which you can plot other quantities of the simulation. And for example, now you can... Uh, for, yeah, for instance, here you have the famous celerity that we are talking uh, today. And this here is the ratio between the celerity and, uh, uh, and the velocity. Uh, that's the kinematic ratio. And if you look at the, uh, at the schisa here, you see that the, the celerity is sometimes uh, it is much larger than the Yeah, so here the celerity is uh, minus 0 0.5. But if we look at the, 
because the C flux is uh, minus zero six. So it's, the the it's one order of magnitude greater. So if you want to change your simulation, you can change uh, the boundary condition, so you can change the time series. You can change the type of the grid, so you have to modify the input file, the CSV file, to run in the first notebook. And then uh, what you can change? Okay, maybe you can change the model for the hydraulic conductivity. You can uh, include the dependence on temperature. So. Um, that's all. So you can have different combination for the same simulation. <laughs> and we never did, but nothing excludes that you take this one, you build a the, build the component, a plug in the reservoir model, substituting, for instance, the problem of insulation. Questions? Are you finished? Yeah. How sensitive is it to the No, it's uh, here is five minutes. Because it depends on the time series you have. Because uh, for example I downloaded it. No, no, because the method is semi basic. So it's unconditionally stable. And I like I hear the I download the data from Metro Argentino and we write data every five minutes. And I keep this uh, time to resolution because when you want to start to study the infiltration, maybe you just want to have a very detailed time series of operation. Because if you use a hourly uh, time series in an hour maybe the rainfall is because maybe it rains for the first 10 minutes and then so it depends on your data and you can just change uh, everything. Uh, no, no. Uh, one very educational experiment is to look for uh, what happens at the very beginning, for instance, when you start from a very dry soil, and you see there that uh, almost everything everything is uh, absorbed because uh, uh, what is driving in that uh, instant is not just the hydraulic conductivity, but also the the gap in, in, in the gradient in suction, which is high. So, and also there you can have a, a big flux at the beginning, in, even if you have a quite a uh, uh, lower hydraulic conductivity. Yeah, yeah. 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 so when we have a yeah. sand on the top, yeah. right? Yeah. And then we yeah. play yeah. the bottom. You yeah. can try to switch. Yes. Yeah. 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 And that, that, uh, yeah. the hydraulic conductivity is a time series for the aggregate of the water. 